This video topic was requested by my patron, Soggy Jane. If you would like to become a patron and have your video topic requests prioritized, link down below. This will help your players feel empowered. Their characters will use their skills and authority to actually affect the town and the rest of the roleplay. Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're gonna to talk about setting up a town roleplay. A town roleplay is any roleplay that takes place in a small town. These are really popular to set up because a town roleplay gives a single location that all of the characters within the roleplay can easily travel around in between, and there's little barriers to who can interact with who inside the roleplay. For the purposes of this video, a town is a low-density settlement in the settlement hierarchy. A town specifically is defined as a settlement with a population of 1,000 to 10,000. A large town is defined as a settlement with 10,000 to 100,000 people. A suburb is also a low density settlement. It could be a town or it could be a large town, but what makes it a suburb is its proximity to a higher density settlement. A town typically has a clinic, a fire station, a police department, a school district, and multiple residential neighborhoods. A town typically also has a main shopping area. This could be an outdoor mall that has like a large parking lot and lots of stores there. It could be an indoor mall like we had a lot of in the 90s, or it could just be a place that a lot of shops happen to be like a main street downtown type location. When creating your town, the first thing you'll need to do is pick its location. Is it in the mountains? Is it in the desert? Is it a beach town? Is it maybe a suburb of a larger city? Also, what time is your town set in? Is it in modern times? Is it in some future time, some past time? Exactly where and when your town is located will change various features of that town. Once you've chosen a location, I recommend finding a town that is similar to the town that you're designing that exists in real life. You could either make your roleplay actually set in this town if you want to, or you could use that town as inspiration. When it comes to town roleplay, remember the maximum population is 100,000, so it's really unlikely that someone actually from that town is gonna join your roleplay. That means if your roleplay is actually set in this town, you don't have to make everything match exactly. Remember, Forks was used in Twilight, and a lot of things that are in the Twilight books don't actually exist in real forks. If you're nervous about getting things wrong, however, you can just use this town as inspiration. Stephanie Myers could have done this in Twilight. She could have still used forks as her inspiration, but just had a made up town called Spoons, for example. Once you know the location of your town, the next thing I recommend designing is the government. Your town is likely considered a municipality. That means it's going to have a government that functions like a typical city or town government. I'm gonna focus on the US for this section because that's where I'm from, that's what I'm familiar with. So if you're creating a town that is not in the US, then look up the governments for the particular country or area that you're creating your town in. So in the US, there are historically five forms of town or city government. First, there is the council manager government. In this style, a city council is elected by the people and then that council appoints a city manager to oversee the day-to-day goings-on of the town. The mayor in this case is often a member of the council or sometimes it rotates between different council members. The next type is mayor council. This is the same as council manager, except in this style, the mayor is elected by the people separately. In this style, there are strong mayor and weak mayor setups, but this is role play, so we can play kind of fast and loose with the exact rules. You don't really have to define them. The next style is commission. In this style, the people elect commissioners to oversee specific areas of the town. Then the commission comes together to meet and collaborate. Typically, one commissioner is elected as the mayor and it's their job to oversee those council meetings. The next style is town meeting. In this style, all town members are invited and come together to make decisions on basic policy, and then what they'll do is elect specific people to oversee those policies that they all voted on. This style is really rare, but if you have a really small town, your roleplay might have it. The last of the common styles is representative town meeting. 
This is just like the town meeting setup, but instead of everyone meeting to decide the basic policies, the townspeople elect representatives to all meet and decide on basic policies. This is also pretty rare, but again, if your town is kind of small, where it might benefit from something much larger than a council making those decisions, then your roleplay might have it. A word of warning here, do not over-design at this step. This is a world-building step, so your job as the designer of the roleplay is to build out the bones of it, and then your players should come in and fill in the gaps so that they're all contributing to the world and that it all comes together in the end. I will link my World Building 101 video up in the card. If you haven't seen that, I do recommend watching it for this because it will give you more details on what I'm talking about with just laying out those bones. The third thing you're gonna need for your town roleplay is the plot. What makes your town roleplay interesting? I'll link my roleplay plot writing video up in the card as well, so you guys can watch that. That's gonna give you the basics for how to write your roleplay plot. So let's take that information and apply it to a town roleplay. In addition to the hook for your plot for your players, your town roleplay plot should also answer why are your characters in this town and why are they choosing to stay? Maybe your roleplay is like once upon a time and everyone is magically stuck in this town. Maybe all the characters in your roleplay are originally from this town and have a lot of pride in it. Maybe this town is special or unique in some way, and your plot highlights that special or uniqueness. A town roleplay can be in any appropriate group genre. It could be horror, it could be supernatural, it could be slice of life, it could be anything. So make those decisions and work all of that into your plot summary. The fourth thing you'll need for your town roleplay is to ensure that your players can affect the town. Make your powerful characters player characters so that the decisions that your player characters make directly affect the town. Government members, shop owners, teachers, police, all of these should be player characters, not NPCs. This will help your players feel empowered. Their characters will use their skills and authority to actually affect the town and the rest of the roleplay. This means in your application, it is imperative that you give your players a spot to write their character's job or role within the town. This is going to give every character power and purpose within the roleplay. Also within town roleplays, I typically discourage people from putting student as their character's job. This is because when you're a student, you're kind of living in this whole different world from the rest of the people that are more working adults and we want to make sure that your player characters have the ability to affect the town as a whole. What I've found is when I end up allowing student characters into the town roleplay is you kind of end up running two different roleplays, one for the students, one for everybody else. You can mitigate most of this without explicitly banning student characters by just saying all of the player characters must be over the age of 18. All right, final tip for town roleplays and that is to choose a few locations within your town that you describe within your lore book. This is going to ensure that everyone is imagining basically the same thing as their characters navigate through the town. Maybe you have a downtown area, a shopping area, a park, a few neighborhoods, you get the idea. Again, like the government, don't over-design here. Just design a few places and have a system that your players can submit additional locations through an application process, and then as those are approved, they get added to the lore book as well. So to recap, when creating a town roleplay, I recommend designing the following things. First, choose your location. Second, design the government. Third, write the plot. Four, make sure the characters can affect the town. And five, design a few locations for your lore book. Now I love running town role plays, so let me know what your additional questions are down below. I'd be happy to answer them. There might be more that we could make another video on if there's areas that you're still unsure on. So let me know down below. Also, if you do run town role plays, I'm really curious what your tips are. Do they match mine? Do you have some different ones? Do you have like a different method that you go about doing it? Let me know all of it down below. And don't forget to make it a great day.